Welcome to the Game Minder Report. The report. The report. The report. Your weekly source of upcoming gaming news and information for the week of October 17th, 17th 2012. 2012. We're pulling up ever so quickly on the end times. Yes. According to ancient South Americans. Or the polls, depending on who you're asking. Yes. Well. <laughs> you see what I did there? You see what I did there? <laughs> I did. So how you feeling right. today, Jimmy P? I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. It's uh, we're, we're doing this a little bit later in the day. <coughs> so we are. maybe we'll have high energy or low energy. We usually do this in the morning time. Well, I can tell you that my neck hurts. Why? Well. I, I know why, but maybe you, Johnny. You dragged me to this concert last night. Yes, I dragged. No. <laughs> we went to the Coheed and Can. Cambria. Coheed in Cambria. Now we probably just turned off some people. Maybe not. I think I would think that <laughs> looking at the people at the Coheed in Cambria concert looked it, like, yeah, it takes looked, all kinds. But it looked like the exact same people that were at, at, at any PAX. Sure. So and, well, and the reason why I even bring it up at all, aside from to mention that my next alerts is Sack that up. um Coheed in Cambria to me is, at least from my point of view, a success story born of gaming. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because um, I had no idea who these people were. Okay. Until I played Rock Band. Ah. Or maybe maybe it was guitar. I think it was Rock Band. And they, their song Welcome Home was mm -hmm. featured in either the first one or the second one. And then there was a downloadable pack where you could add on another one of the songs from that album. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, these guys are pretty good. I kind of I kind of dig them. Let's go looking for some other more of their music. And they've essentially become probably my second favorite band. We did the same thing with Lamb of God. Lamb of God. And uh, I personally, even though I... From I, Guitar I, Hero 2. Yeah. And I, I personally, even though um, I knew of them, but uh, Rise Against was another band that I really got into because of my... Uh, yeah. I think I actually saw Lamb of God in concert like least, forever ago, but didn't like them or didn't know them enough. Right. And then after I made it so that I had to get five stars on that song on Expert on Guitar Hero 2, mm -hmm. then I was kind of like, these guys were sweet. Yeah. And then we saw them open up for Metallica. We did. Yeah. The Death Magnetic Tour. Which was a great tour, by the way. It was a really good tour. Yeah. Although the lights broke. Welcome to the concert report. Welcome to the music report. So, so what's going on in gaming news, Jim? Well, some people are getting sued. What a shocker. Wait, 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 wait. Don't tell me. Does one of them start with a Z? Yeah, well... Actually, Zynga's being the sewer, not the, the sewer. Not the sewer. <laughs> Zynga is a sewer. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> hey -oh. hey -oh. But, but they're suing one of their own. Uh -oh. So basically what Tell happened, me. yeah, uh, Alan Patmore was a the former general manager for uh, Cityville, which is the game. Right, the, the, the rip Simville rip 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 Simville, yeah. And uh, Patmore, uh, Patmore, I'm sorry, Alan Patmore went to uh, Kick's Eye. Oh, right. Oh, did you see the thing about Kick's Eye? No. They, well, there's a bunch, been a couple of things about Kickside, but they they had this like recruiting video that was like, yes, totally yes, crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, like, we'll put that in the show notes. Let me make a okay. note to put that in the show notes. You should make a reminder, or I could just put it in the show notes. Okay, whatever. Anyway, um, so basically, <laughs> he took 763 files from Zynga's database about about 10 different games. And then copied them to his Kickside computer. Okay. And he's not denying this. Okay. But uh, what Zynga is saying is that uh, I don't want to get the the wording correctly. Is uh, concluded that that basically they can replicate the business of Zynga. And my question is, why would you want to replicate yeah. the business of <laughs> Zynga? So, yeah. But mm. I mean, but here's the other thing. Why would you ever? Put files, uh, any type of files that aren't from that company onto a company computer. I, that's the one thing I've never understood, how, how people get caught doing yeah. the dumbest things on corporate computers. Well, I mean, yes, obviously in this day and age, now you'd think people would know the, know better. But, you know, in especially as a lot of corporate computers shifted from being the box that's on your desk to the box that you carry around with you. Mm -hmm. I could see how those lines could get blurred. I mean, you've got a company iPad and you use yeah, games, your own games, I, your own apps. I understand stuff. that, but uh, you don't have any tracking software that, that that I know of on that iPad. That you know of, right? Well, I know you don't, but but what I'm saying is that anything that would be like, just ignore that little light by the camera, Jim. <laughs> but anything from a big company that has was issued sure. to you, I, I I would be very you know scared about and. 
And so that's, I mean, when I, um, when I was doing some work at a Fortune 500 company that wasn't a Fortune 500 company, I didn't do it on their computers, even though I probably could have get away with it. But uh, right. I, just, I just, I brought my own computer. I was like, screw it. Yeah. But but th- that's one of the things. Um, someone else is getting sued. The Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, U- Ubisoft is not so pleased. Yeah, apparently um, with the Black Eyed Peas. Yes, yes. Um, let's call me st- Jeremy. Me. Okay, okay. Let's get this started. And let it. Let's get it started in here. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, even though I, th- I like the original words better as far as this podcast is concerned. We'll skip that for now. <laughs> okay. So what's happening? What is Ubisoft claiming? <laughs> Ubisoft is claiming that they are losing, they potentially have lost a million dollars because P- the Black Eyed Peas never signed off on their iOS game. They made an iOS game in vain of the Black Eyed Peas. They had already made a uh, Xbox game and uh, I believe a PlayStation game as well. Okay. Uh, together. And then there were also the in Black the Black Eyed Peas experience. Sure. We and Connect. Why you need a game for that experience, I don't know. But nevertheless, the only way for the iOS game to be released is if they got the approval from the Black Eyed Peas. And the Black Eyed Peas were supposed to do this in 10 days for, for a yay or nay. And then if there was a no, then they were going to, you had to say why it was mm-hmm. disapproved and they can come back and make the changes, whatever. So the Black Eyed Peas totally just uh, you know, wrote them off. And because if they're saying that it was like a two hundred thousand dollars to make the app, which I don't know about that, it could be. I yeah. don't know. But then they were saying that uh, there would be an additional eight hundred thousand dollars of profit that they are missing out on sure. because the app never got released. Um. So they're suing. So they're suing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, as a contractual breach of contract, I mean, who knows? You I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know that the world is going to be a dimmer and darker place without another Black Eyed Peas game. But, you know, if they have a contract, you know. I, I don't. Some, some of these games I don't understand. Like, people buy them, but I still don't understand how even. It's the beauty of cross marketing is yeah. really what it is. You know what I mean? Like, the same game without the Black Eyed Peas would probably be nothing that anyone cares about. But, you know, these days it's mostly literally about that it's about cross marketing you know if you can get a brand a strong brand that can carry Mm -hmm. that brand identity into new markets that's what everybody's trying to do you know you've got you've got your movie and you need to make it as a game you've got your tie-ins yeah yeah your tie-ins you know now hold that thought for a second okay uh, because this is the the other big thing that it's not news but something that is game let's say this it's gaming adjacent sure uh is it gamma sutra or gamma sutra I've heard it both ways. I'm going to say go Game with, of Sutra. I would go with Gamma Sutra. Personally. See, I would say Game of Sutra because it's a game. Yeah, like but I've Gam- always understood it as to be supposed to sound like Kama Sutra. Ah. Uh, but then again, I call things a like... Chil- it's a children's book. Yes. Look it up. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's, it's And like, so that's it's why I hear it's Gama Sutra. It'd be kind of like Kama Sutra. Sure. They had this really good um, article with uh, charts and figures and whatnot. Basically, the... Ooh, pretty chart. Yes. <laughs> the overlying article was about how 55% of all holiday sales are from the top 20 games out there. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me either. And uh, basically it was talking about how uh, you know middle, mid-market games get pushed down uh, because they a mid-market game can come out in September and people may buy it for the first month, but then right. October comes around and people will not buy it after that first month more because uh, they're saving their money for the Halo 4 or the Call sure. of Duty. or um, and, and we see this borne out in the data on GameMinder as well. I mm-hmm. mean, if you look at the, num- at the games that are being tracked, you know, there's like the games that have like 20,000 plus followers, which is, you know, like your Halos, your Assassin's Creed's. Um, what was the third one that's just about to crack Call of that? Duty? Yeah, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Grand Theft Auto 5. And those are all in like the 16 to 20 to 25,000 followers. But after that, it drops off precipitously. You know, you've got, then, you know, we start getting a little bit down. I have to have it up here, so I'll just look on it. You know, it starts going down. You got Mass Effect Trilogy. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm actually looking at the wrong thing. Let me bring it up and I can. But yeah, you got like a Borderlands 2, which would still, I think, would fall under under the top 20. But uh... yeah, I mean, and that's got 12,000 followers. But then once you get past that, now you're down to six. You got Far Cry, or Far, Far Cry 3 is at 7, Hitman Absolution is at 7,000. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's this huge gulf. You got your 21, 22,000s, your, your low teens, and then it drops right back down to like seven, six, five. So. Right. Um, the other interesting thing w- was, was that now, and this is something that I actually wanted to uh, possibly blog about, but... Blog um, it. The whole 
Hollywood mirroring or gaming people ho- mirroring Hollywood and how what they're doing oh, you mean is, like sequelitis and not only that, but they're banking on they're uh, they're putting everything in one shell because they know it's going to be a cash cow. Well, they do, but they don't. Because remember, um, was it Activision who owned the game, uh, the Guitar Hero, and I th- I think also the was it the Call of Duty franchises where they basically announced. This would have been like two or three years ago. We have it. We are going to exploit these two franchises on a yearly basis moving forward. And they drove specifically. They drove Guitar Hero right into the ground. I mean, there was Guitar Hero. There was Guitar Hero Two. Then there was Guitar Hero Three. Okay. Then there was like Guitar Hero Four, but there was also Guitar Hero Metallica, on tour. Van there was Metallica. Halen, there was yeah. Van Halen. You but, know, what but I mean? they, and they just but they came out with a new it. guitar each time, though. Some a lot of times too. Um, I, and then there was the whole band issue where you had to buy this. Call of Duty comes out every year. Yeah, see, Call of Duty is Madden more or comes less out every year. Sports ones are different. Okay. But what, my, what, what I'm trying to say I'm is... I'm not saying it's better. Believe me, I'm not trying to say it's better. Because I know that there has been some discussion about how... I think, wasn't it FIFA? The most recent version of FIFA essentially was literally the exact same game with just a roster swap. And there were some people complaining about it. Right. And, I mean, that's... You know, it happens. But, I mean, you know, the draw of a game like that is not... You know the new realistic physics engine. At this point, it's I want to play with the people who are playing on my TV right now. Right. You know, so people play pay it. But this is the the last two sentences or the last sentence is basically put like is 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 awesome. Is basically saying put it another way: Would the original Borderlands have succeeded in this very market in which its sequel thrived? It's the whole you know chicken and the egg thing. Sure. The Borderlands two did awesome based on the fact that Borderlands one was so good. But would Borderlands one even be made or and so that's that the weird thing. Well, too. but again, it was. You know what I mean? I don't know that this is a recent problem. I mm. mean, this is something that's been plaguing gaming. I mean, there, Halo Four wouldn't be at four now if this hadn't happened a while ago. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Like Halo had to break in somewhere. It had going for it the fact that it was the launch title to have for Microsoft's new console. But new IPs do break through. I think this is one of those kind of things where people are always saying stuff like, "Kids these days don't have any respect like they did back in the day." But you know what? Back in the day, they didn't really have any respect either. You know, the idea of banking on a new IP in any one of these industries is a risky proposition. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I find it. I also find it funny that gamers seem to want a another Halo, another sure. Zelda, another and 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 flock to it. But when you hear that there's going to be a seventh Rambo or another Taken, you know, a Taken Two, it's like yeah. it's it's almost the opposite. In um in in Hollywood, where they don't want a sequel to the movie that you love, ex- with the exception of comic book movies. Well, and you, well, and I was gonna say the other thing about it is there's always this reboot concept. You know, I don't know. Some games do this. You know, like um a, a, a great example is Prince of Persia. You know, the mm-hmm. Prince of Persia games are old. <laughs> like right. The original Prince of Persia games were super old, and they rebooted that franchise to the point where it became its own new thing. Then they had three games, which most people thought were pretty solid, and then they rebooted it again. Right. I don't know if you, you know. I don't know if you ever played the one that was like the fourth one. Right. But was I did. actually technically a new first one. Like, and so they rebooted it. It was not a sequel, really, to the other ones. Um, and that's kind of like what's happening with uh, Spider Man now in the movies. You know, you got your Spider Man one, two, and three. Three was widely hailed as being like bloated and not so good and whatever. So they rebooted it. They're going for a darker, edgier, you know, whatever. Blah blah. Well, blah. And, and you know. Uh, uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but I did some research because I was looking at, at movie sequels. They're going to reboot the Batman series. Yeah, after come, the after, after the this one. Nolan trilogy, um, and Nolan's actually going to be the producer, not the director, but uh, he's still going to have his, his hands in it because they want to make uh, they want to follow the Avengers and they want to make a uh, Justice, Justice League. League. So they have they're going to start it again with a new Batman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... which means that we're going to get an Aquaman movie. <laughs> I'd like to see a dark and gritty Aquaman movie. I guess there's going to be an Ant-Man movie, too. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is not a movie podcast, no. but I do think that, you, you know. about music, so might as well. Yeah, might as well. But the but the point you're, the overarching point right. you're trying to make is one that has made a lot. And I think it's it's probably high in our mind because having just come from IndieCade, where we're seeing the far other end of the spectrum, right. where it's like people who are coming up with not only new IPs, but new entire conceptual frameworks as to how games work and how you play them and where you play them and who you play them with. Like, the creativity of gaming, I am not worried about the creativity of no. gaming. No. Here's the thing. I think the person, the, the games that are getting 
um, killed is the middle game. Yeah. Which I, part of me is actually like, well, maybe I'm not that upset about that. Like, do I really care about, you know, uh, a, like a, a monster man, monster truck game from, from you know, Activision? That's going to like. Well, yeah, I mean, the shovelware. Right. Where it's like, yeah, because I, I would say that there's several tiers. There's your triple A's, obviously. Right. There's your indie total independence, right? The middle has a few different tiers because there's like down market, professionally made shovelware. But then there's also sort of the upper market indie backed by investor kind of yeah. thing, you know, backed by marketing. So, you know, there, there is a lot happening in the middle. That isn't it can't all be grouped into one place. And if if it does mean that the sort of low down market shovelware dies because, you know, the financial ability to maintain that just goes away again, like you were saying, I don't know if that's such a bad thing. Um, I would be upset if it affects disproportionately a lot of these new and interesting games, you know, the things like um, Journey. Which, by the way, I started playing, and I don't know that I get it. <laughs> I'm going to give it another try, but um, I tried it, and I'm not sure I got it. And I don't know if I'm going to get back to it because Unfinished Swan, I yeah. believe, just came out today. Um, or yesterday. One of these last two days, I got a push. So I know that it, that's going to be out, and I'm definitely going to play that. And so I would like to think that that's going to get a little bit more push from Sony. So, A, it's digital, so it doesn't even really fall into this discussion. Because this discussion is about retail box games, right? It's about retail box games. And, and that's the other thing, too, is that because of all the the new digital, whether it's Steam or iOS sure. or, or, you know, Ouya, if that ever happens, or what that, their creativity can still be done on a smaller scale and, and make money. Yeah. Um, which I don't think would have happened ten, even five years ago. Well, again, it's, you know, it's the same thing we see everywhere. You know, YouTube brought up, you know, blogging brought up about, about the dem democratization of publishing. And so now everybody can write and not everybody can write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who attempt to write and aren't so good. And then there's a lot of people who do write and wouldn't have been discovered, but get discovered. You know, podcasting for the same thing for like audio content. You know, that's what we're doing. You know, five years ago, well, five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, probably right. not so much. We would not have been doing this. Unless we're um, in college radio. <laughs> unless, yeah, college radio. Exactly. Um, same thing with YouTube and, you mm -hmm. know, video. Um, you know, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube these days that is really quite amazing and produced for almost no money and is really just good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those people sometimes get discovered and become, you know, the next Hollywood sort of whatever. Um, and now we're seeing it with gaming, you know, especially with, you know, the tools. We saw some interesting tools at Indiecade that can mm -hmm. be used to, like, build games quickly and easily. And that kind of stuff is going to start to fill out that uh, sort of, you know, lower end simple to produce but as we've seen on like the iOS app store, when the barrier to entry is so low, you do get a lot of junk. Yeah. And so filtering that is going to become a difficult thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, would read, I would read the article, and uh, I, think, I thought it was you know, yeah, a good we'll read. Yeah, we'll link to it in the show notes. And uh, so, yeah, but uh, you were mentioning that there are some games coming out. Yeah, let's talk about what's coming out this week. All right, so on the big, on the AAA big end of the spectrum, as we were just talking about, we've got uh, Medal of Honor Warfighter. Mm -hmm. We've got Forza Horizon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Street Fighter X Tekken? Cross Tekken? Street Fighter Cross Tekken? Versus? No. Uh, for the Vita. With, sure. I believe this has actually already been out, but now it's coming out for the Vita as well. I think this was a PS3. I think they're actually under like Street Fighter Cross Tekken 2 or something like sure. that. I don't know, whatever. But uh, we got Killzone Trilogy. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the bigger ones. And just a couple of the lesser known ones just to highlight. Sure. Uh, your favorite and mine, uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2. two. Yes. I know the first one, I thought it couldn't get any better than that. Yeah, but driving Euro, on the wrong know. side of the road blew me away. Yeah. And then we've got Argorhythm, which I, don't, I know nothing about, but the name sounded neat. It's coming out on the 23rd All right. of October. So uh, any j games jump out at you this week, Jim? One game jumped out at me. Um, basically, the, <laughs> the description of the game is pirates or buccaneers versus, <laughs> versus Vikings fighting on uh, balloons with cannons on them. I don't need to say anything more. There's nothing about that that doesn't sound awesome. Yeah. Hot air balloons with cannons. Right on. Uh, and I'm actually not going to follow a game this week. Uh, nothing jumped out at me. So I think what I'm just going to do is remind everybody that Carmageddon is now out yeah, for there iOS. And it's awesome. Yes. I played it. I ran through an entire field of football players, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> so um, I would definitely suggest checking that out. You can uh, scoop it up actually for free. If you're listening to this today, it is free. So go ahead and scoop it up. Uh, if not... 
Um, I think it's only going to be like a buck ninety nine or two bucks or something along those lines. But well worth it. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for the Game Minder Report this week. To view the show notes for this episode or follow any of the games mentioned today, don't forget to visit GameMinderReport.com slash 21. And to see when the newest games are listed, don't forget to visit Game <laughs> visit GameMinder at Facebook.com slash GameMinder or v- uh, follow us on Twitter at GameMinder. See, and you've even got the script I know. Week. I know. And to follow all your favorite upcoming games, don't forget to visit GameMinder.com or download the app for iOS or Android. And finally, don't forget to buy all of your, your games through our website or app. Every game you pre order or purchase helps support this show and the service signing off for the gamer report i'm jim and i'm jeremy reminding you don't don't forget forget to to play. play